What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Another Wax Party break here, 2022-23, Bowman University best base, uh, basketball, sorry. Two case break. Random first letter, first name, number two. Now, again, guys, 16 total boxes, eight boxes per case, all card ship, guys. And, of course, it's a random letter from the list below. As an example, if you get randomized letter V and we pull any Victor Webb and Yama, that'll go to you. And, uh, like I said, here's a dice roller. Here's the customer names. And then here's the letters. So let's click dice roll. You got a one and a four five times. Good luck. One, two, three, four, and five. One, four, five. Chad, down to Tristan. And here's the letters. One, two, three, four, five. M down to T. So Chad with M, Tristan with WZ and all other letters, Adam with letter C, Alan with letter H, and Kev, look at that. Letter V, Tristan with K, Rob with R, Adam with D, Tristan with B, Adam with L, N, Tristan with J, and A, um, Rob with P, F, Alan with uh, uh, letter E, G, Rob with S, and then Tristan with T. It's a little one spot mojo for Kev with V, man. Good luck, buddy. There you go, Kev. It worked out, man. Well, you know, obviously I want to try to get you some Wemon Yama Autos, but it's the base and then the refractor colors still sell really well. So, I mean, even if we rack up a couple of those, I want to say the base cards are still at least like 20 bucks, right? So we rack up a couple of those in every case. It adds up. And then if we get like a, like a real refractor silver, that's probably still, what, like 55, 75 bucks maybe now? I know it was like 150 before at one point. That's right, Andrew. Okay, see, baby. I mean, look, man, I think he would have balled last year if it wasn't for his injury, you know? I just know that after Summer League, he probably won't be playing any Pro-Ams because, again, that's where he got injured last year and, and uh, you know, just, uh, just didn't work out, man. The Spurs play, but of course, when we play the first two games, yeah, he doesn't play anymore. Oh, did they play earlier today? What was the score? Last I checked, he had like a 21 or 27 point game the last time I seen. But yeah, the cool thing about Chet, guys, is that Chet will be a rookie technically, so he'd be a good one to kind of. Well, honestly, his stuff is still underpriced than what it should be, but. Obviously, since Summer League, his stuff has gone up a lot because people are now seeing that, hey, man, this guy's playing really good. Obviously, I know it's Summer League. Let's not too, overreact too much. But, again, I think we all know that it's, it's going to be a little different during the regular season. But, you know, obviously, it's still kind of good to get a little hype going. All right, well, I'm going to close it then, guys. I don't think anybody's in the trade. All right, what was the stat line, though, Mike? Give me the stats. Trey Mann for the Thunder has also been killing it, too. Let's see. 
All right, so Keontae Johnson had nine points. Usman Diang, he had 17 tonight. He was another first-round pick last year. He was, I think Usman Diang was picked right before J-Dub was picked. And then Kaysan Wallace, he's the new draft pick this year uh, from uh, this year's draft, I believe. Yeah, it doesn't look like Chet played today, actually. But he did play the other day, though. It doesn't look like Trey Mann has been, hasn't been playing anymore, either. Johnny Davis played over there. He's the first-round pick last year. He had 14 points. I love Summer League, though. I think Summer League's a great thing. It gets people hype again about basketball, right? Uh, you know, even though we're still months away from the regular season. And it gets these rookies, second years, maybe even third years, a chance to kind of showcase their, their skills. And, you know, because, like, they might not even make the team, but obviously if they can uh, showcase some skills, maybe they get picked up somewhere else. So it's kind of fun. And it just it brings a little hype back to basketball, you know? I think Summer League's awesome, bro, man. It's sick. It's empty. Can you give me a cup? I have a cup right here. Forgot to get some before I start. Oh, it's either one? Oh. Alright, so we'll go, you know, four boxes at a time, and then we'll rip the next four, and then we'll gather up the next case, and we'll go through the next case. So again, guys, this is a wax party break, but just let FYI, when I post up the next one, Nick hasn't already. It won't be another wax party break, but uh, it'll get reposted. It shouldn't stop people. This stuff is still selling like hotcakes, so...
Ska jag ta den? Jag tar och blandar på den. Jag vill bli finish i hjälp. Nej, jag har inte det där. Jag har inte droppat det där. Jag har bara droppat det där. Lägg det där. Jag kommer att ta det där. Jag kommer att ta det där. Gilo, have you? Yes, I have. I've seen uh, two episodes so far. I've seen the first episode on Wednesday night when I got home. I I'm gonna do like one a day. I, I, I could binge it all, but you know, it's just I already go to sleep too late anyway. So, but yes, I've seen the first two episodes. Honestly, Gilo, I'm tired of Brittany Mahomes. Please, just I can't. I'm gonna kind of skip whenever she pops up now. I don't know why, man. I, I just, I'm pretty sure she's a good person. She's probably great to Mahomes, but oh my god. I just can't with her, man. <laughs> just something just, just doesn't rub me the right way with her. But yeah, I, I seen the second one yesterday. Me being, uh, me being obviously a big Ducks guy, I love Mariota, right? So I was more intrigued on seeing Mariota. Mahomes, of course, is the big money ticket there. I mean, it's kind of cool to see the day-to-day -day stuff, but... Uh, just can't with Brady Mahomes, man. My wife feels the same way. No, I don't know. But yeah, it was, it was pretty cool, man. I love that they followed a couple of stars. I'm just curious to see, because obviously, like, Mariota's... You know ending with the Falcons was kind of a little bit of a mystery. You know, because he got injured, but supposedly they said he gave up on the team and the team benched him and just told him, don't show up to the last couple games. So I don't know. It's I'm kind of interested to see if we see what that's all about. I heard, I heard we do got to find out a little bit. But uh, kind of cool to see Kirk Cousins as well in there. Yes, it's. I think it's the voice, right? I think it's like... Like, I don't know. I, I think maybe it's because she's, like, so outspoken and it's her voice and, like, she knows she is Patrick Mahomes' wife. Like, you know, there's some people, there's some athletes, like, that have, you know, their partners where they're not really in the spotlight. They're really just kind of to the side, you know, private, doing their thing. Where I just feel like she likes the spotlight and wants to just be out there and, you know already having a lot of controversy with her and especially his, his brother you know I just think of it as like other quarterbacks and other athletes wives are just to the side and don't really you know get shown up on all the time you know I don't know it's, it's maybe it's that yes I think it's more like that that's a good way to say it. yeah she enjoys his success more than he does yeah because my home seems like a down-to-earth guy too like don't get me wrong I'm sure there's times where he wants to you know be out and about but It seems to me he's just a normal dude too as well, right? I mean, you can kind of see the difference, right? I mean, I'm not saying Mahomes is, or uh, Kirk Cousins' wife or, you know, Mariota's wife is not worthy of it in a sense, right? I mean, they're not Mahomes, but at the same time, I mean, they're still NFL quarterbacks. But yeah, I think that's, I think that's more on the dot right there. University, back in the shop today. Yep. Folks like it, huh? Yeah, they want to chase the women, yeah. Yes, he is, dude. In the second episode, whenever you watch it, Chilo, he has a cool little, like, You know, I don't want to spoil it, but he has like a cool room that he has in his house, and you'll see it, and it's pretty awesome. Like, yeah, he's just such a, he's just a, he's just a normal celebrity dude, then, yeah. In episode two, I got to, see, we got to see a little bit more Mariota, uh, you know, background a little bit more, so that was cool. But it's crazy, man. You know, re reliving that season. <laughs> that was funny. That was really funny. With Roland and Cole's cash. 
But it's so funny, right? That that shirt's probably like Patagonia, like the wife said and shit. It's probably like a two hundred dollars shirt or like a you know shit like that. I think Patagonia is kind of expensive, isn't it? But uh, yeah, definitely looks like he's from Kohl's. I think it's so funny that he says my wife dresses me. <laughs> oh man, that was so funny. You know, sneakily, man, that dude's made a lot of money. He he's already almost made like three hundred million dollars in his career. He's he's cashed in. All right, well, I'm in Yama base already. Bridges. Khalif Battle. To 75. And then we got a Frankie Collins out of Arizona State. Letter F. Is Rob with letter PF? Caitlin Clark. Constellations of Greatness. This is like a case hit, I believe. Oscar. Letter O is uh, all other letters for Tristan. And Al Amir Dolls. Number 99. Letter A going to Tristan. Next one. For Richardson. Brandon Miller. Tiger Campbell. Yeah, no, he's... Look, I mean, I just think for Kirk Cousins, it's been unfortunate for him that he just hasn't been so successful in the playoffs. But, I mean, he's racking up those stats, man. I mean, honestly, if you look at his stats, man, he's he's been a very productive quarterback throughout his career. Just he hasn't chalked up a lot of Ws in the win column when it comes to, like, playoffs. You know? Trey Alexander, I mean, that's really what it is. Kirk Cousins, man, he put up some crazy numbers last year. I mean, the Vikings also were a pretty good team last year. It's just, again, you know, just got bounced in the first round, you know? Like, it's just really what it is. But like I said, I mean, the fact that he's already racked up that much money, it's pretty amazing. And he's going to get another contract, too. I mean, unless he wants to retire, but I doubt it. He's not that old. But uh, I think what he's a, he has like another year left on his contract, I think. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. Bazillus. The to two ninety nine. All right, I'll check it right now, Kev. I know I got a Wemby in the first box, but I could have had one here too. I'll check right now, man. Can't win more. Can't win more than that. Let's see. Oh. Yes. Numero dos. There you go, man. Sorry about that. Hunter, Cat Tour, out of 99. I mean, that all depends on the health of his team and, and his health too, Rex. I think everybody's projecting him to have that Jalen Hurts-type leap. 
Because at the end of the day, I mean, he's faster than Jalen Hurts. He has a stronger arm than Jalen Hurts. But it just seems like he still needs to get better at decision making and, you know, and, and you know, obviously just, it'll, that'll happen in, within time. But, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, I think, he's, I think he'll do just fine. But again, that all depends on his health and the health of his team. We can't guarantee that he's going to ball out, right? That's the one thing with Jalen Hurts that's kind of surprised a lot of people. A lot of people just always doubted him, thinking that he would not make it, not be the guy. But then, you know, he's just been proving people wrong. Obviously, when you surround yourself with a good team, that also helps too. But, you know, if you really, really take a look, Hanson Emanuel, at Jalen Hurts last year, I mean, even though the Eagles had a really good team around him, he also made some plays that, without him, the Eagles wouldn't be winning at all. You know, when it comes to throws, running the ball, decision making, right? Not throwing f- too many interceptions, right? Making mistakes. Khalil Ware. Honestly, Rex, you should just go to the National and just get that shit redeemed for like a black box one-on-one or something, white box. That's what a lot of people are doing. Alright, let's continue on. See you, Mike. Alright, we got Ashlyn Watkins. And there's a Webin Yama refractor. You'll definitely get something for it, Rex, because the fact is that at the time it could have been worth a lot more, so it's still just in fields. You'll still get a box, which is going to be still one on one at the end of the day. And Jaden Zachary. I remember some people last year at the National were taking some really cheap redemptions. And honestly, like, some of those guys were making out big time. Like, at some point at the National, the guys that are doing it don't even care. The National just gets too hectic, honestly, man. They just kind of want to keep everybody happy. So they just move along and be like, here you go. Here you get three boxes for this card, man. Here you go, bye. You know. So since it's Justin Fields... And again, too, Rex, you got to put up the face, man. You got to be upset, you know, demand it, and they'll fucking, they'll, they'll, they'll work with you. Kind of hate to be like that. I'm not that kind of person either, but they, you just kind of have to be aggressive, you know? You know how long I've been waiting for this? I better be getting three boxes for this. <laughs> yes. Yes. Be a Karen. That shit works, man. It does. I've seen it happen a lot. That too. Yeah, use your kids. I promised my kid this card by by two months ago at his birthday. You know. Now he hates me. <laughs> but no, it's true though, man. I think when you complain, and this is the one thing, right? Complaining in an email, complaining over the phone is one thing, but the national is just like when breakers go break in person, right? You have to deal with the customer right in front of you. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I remember I had a buddy that went and redeemed some stuff for some of his redemptions, and he basically complained about how long he's waited and, like, you know, I lost so much money. And then the guy gave him a couple boxes, and, like, some of the stuff he ended up hitting in there, like, tripled the amount of the value he would have got back, like, even in that one redemption, you know? So again, it's just like I said, be a Karen, complain about it, and 
They'll try to make you happy. Finally, they're going to tell you, get the hell out of your Rex. Next. No, they're not going to do that. You know? Boxes, um, I think like 130 still, 140. I think they're on jazbees.com. Yeah, we have them for 140, I think. I think at one point they started off like around 120, 130, so they kind of gone up in price, but not that much. At least not with us. I don't know. I don't know about elsewhere though. We do not offer three for one to see those light scoops. No, what is Collecticon, man? The only big card show that's like huge I've ever been to is the National. You know, I've been to like the Dallas card show a couple times and um, I went to one in Miami. That was pretty big at one point during like the the boom. 
I've been to the other one in Chicago. It was spectacular. And then all the local ones here. But no, what is... What is Collecticon? Oh, wow. They have some, like, anime in there, too? Hell yeah, dude. Who's gonna be there for Pokemon? Is, like, the voice of Brock gonna be there? Cool. Do they, do they tour around? Where, where are you going? But, I mean, obviously, I don't know if you guys have heard, but, I mean, it was no secret to us, at least. You know, um, Fanatics started a new company, and uh, we'll be putting on shows and uh, as early as next year, and could be a very big competitor to the National, which we've heard rumors of that for a long time already. Once Fanatics dipped their toes into the hobby with Tops, they wanted to take over the game, so... So, um, you know, I think it's, I think they're going to make a better national per se, make it more mainstream with more actors, celebrities, athletes, and get you a better experience, which I think is good because honestly the national is fun, but I mean, there's really nothing to it though. Like when you pay for VIP and all that stuff, you're not, all you're getting is like front of the line, really. You get to go in before everybody else does. Yeah, you get a little, couple little treatments here and there, hospitality, but not really worth the, the couple hundred dollars you probably pay for it. So, you know, I think Fanatics will enhance it for the customers. Now, a lot of people will be upset, right? I mean, obviously, because some people think that they're gonna make it too mainstream and push out the, the true collectors and stuff like that, but I just think they wanna grow it, obviously. Which is not a bad thing, right? But it'll still feel like a normal card show, but it's just it's gonna be a little bit more more fancy probably. They're coming to Long Beach? Wow, they're the Long Beach Convention Center? I literally live like a mile away from there. Would you say it was called again? Collecticon? Oh wow! You're coming to Long Beach, Gila, or you're just, or you're you're going to the one near near you? That they're coming to Kansas City. That's right. So you're going to Kansas City. Wow! I I legit live like a mile away from the convention center. I live in downtown Long Beach. Yeah, it looks like they're going to Kansas City, and then in August they come here to Long Beach, and then they go to Charlotte, then they go to Denver, Houston, Orlando, Dallas, Fort Worth. Trey Alexander, Brandon Miller, Constellation of Greatness again, Julian Phillips. And a Jaden Zachary Gold. 5475. Letter J. Which is going to Tristan. Cam Whitmore. Wow, and a red. What a box for colors. Brandon Murray. Six out of ten. That's not Keegan Murray's brother, is it? Letter B. Going to Tristan. Nice little red right there, buddy.
Trey Alexander. The 250. And we have a Hunter Cat Tour. Letter H. Going to Alan Murdoch. Oh, okay, so that's not Keegan the Murray's. There's another Murray. There's a Keegan Murray's brothers in this draft too, but I forget which one he is. Isn't there? Isn't there a Keegan Murray brother here? No, Julio's cereal. No. Is this supposed to be Fruit Loops? But just they changed it? For like him as a promotion? I actually just went to the market on Monday, on my day off, to shop for the week. And I uh, was running low on cereal and I wanted to switch it up, so I got some Cocoa Puffs. I ate some last night. I haven't eaten Cocoa Puffs in like at least like six, seven months. Shit was fire. Jalen Hood Chafino. Pozzola Silver. Russier Bolton. Gotcha. I'm 250. But it's a knockoff Fruit Loops, but for his Julio's, right? Basically. I mess with Fruit Loops. I grew up on eating Fruit Loops, Apple Jacks, you know. Lucky Charms, Tricks. But I was mainly like a Fruit Loops, Apple Jacks kind of guy. Golden Grams. Cinnamon Toast Crunch I did like, but a little too cinnamony for me sometimes. Kamari Lands. Yeah, Chris Murray, right? This one right here. And Julian Phillips Blue to 150. Leah Boston, 499. Kaylin Clark, silver. And a Jaden Shutt, Cool. My brother one time bought the Jonathan Quick ones they made when he won like the Con Smythe. I think I still have it on my phone. Quick Crunch Frosted Flakes. I ate a bowl of it. I think we bought, we opened one and then we kept one sealed. Guys, first case done. 
So quick little recap there. There's all the autos. We got a couple of golds. We got a red Brandon Murray. My Minyama Silver. I think it's super, super crazy. Oh, scared the shit out of me, dude. I was like, somebody bumped in my, <laughs> my chair. Hey guys, did you miss me? It's finally back from Europe. He ate cereal. Well, I don't know which one, which time are you talking about? The, the first time he ate it, or I remember they did that. I think he did eat cereal. Yes. Yeah, we had that one time actually. I I did a gold rush yesterday. And I, I pulled you did one card. of those? Yeah. And it's so sick. And I looked it up. It's like thirty bucks. Oh. <laughs> it's still, it's such a dope. Card. Yeah. I don't know. Did he gain an accent? I don't know. I didn't. No. I did not, unfortunately. He likes the Cubs. Like, he's in Indiana, which is close, right? How far is how far is Chicago for you, Rex? Like a couple hours? I don't know. Everything's so close over there. Are you going on the National Rex? Catch any uh, good movies, TV shows on the flight. I uh, I know how far was the flight actually? On the way there, it was nine and a half hours. On the way back, it was eleven. Oh well, that's not that bad then. So what is it like four or five to New York, and then, or did you get a connection or went straight over there? No, I went straight. Damn. I finally watched everything, everywhere, all at once, which was good. Uh, what else did I watch? I also watched the new Ant Man movie. Oh, The Great Gatsby. Finally got around to watching that. <laughs> um, what did I watch on the way there? I fell asleep through every movie on the way there. I didn't see it. What time, you what time did you fly out? Like a red eye or not? No, so actually, my flight there was fucked. We, uh, we left here at like 1 p.m. and landed in London at 6 a.m. So we stayed. We well, it's kind of then like a red eye per se, right? Yeah. You got there super early. How many times did they serve you like meals or food? Um, on the flight there twice. On the what? On the way back, I was sleeping every time that they came. <laughs> <laughs> I could never fall asleep, man. I just I probably snore too loud. Like if I'm sleeping like this, I'm snoring oh, so loud. Dude, dude, <laughs> I'm like I can't. On the trains and stuff, I caught, like I would wake myself up with yeah. my own snores, <laughs> and I'd like, look around to see if anyone was like looking at me. Right. Like, super embarrassed. He did go to the baseball game though. I think we've seen the Cubs, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, Rex. I went to the Cubs Cardinals game. Yeah. Luckily, I went to the one that the uh, Cubs lost, <laughs> and I bet on the Cardinals. So happy about that. The other game was like a murder, all right? The first yeah. one was yeah. Dude, also in London, in Ireland, there's a sports book on every corner. Really? Yeah. Damn. It's nuts. So they really want you to gamble. Yeah, them. and then they've got like like little like, slot machines in there. That's cool. That was actually the first thing I did when I got to London. <laughs> right. Is it official sponsors of like bigger sports books or just like uh, their own over there? No, they're all like their own. They're really big for like the horse racing. Yes, I know horse yeah. racing is probably big over there. I, went, I actually went to like the big, big one in London. Oh, well, damn. Spot. You weren't in London when Wilbur no sorry, right? I, was, I actually, because I went back, so yeah, I was there for the Wilbur. Chicago's about a four-hour drive. Rex went to the first national we all went to. 
um, he visited, I don't remember how long, I think it was like one or two days there. That's like our first, we went to our first one in like 2015. Um, I, I actually don't hate either of the teams at all. But I would say I like the Cardinals more and I thought they were going to win that day, so I bet on them. But actually, like, like the 2016 Cubs, I was a fan of. I remember at one point the Dodgers and Cardinals had like the closest all time uh, record, right? They were like together, like super. Yeah, I mean, the series where uh, game six, David Fries hits a game time triple and then walk off and run is one of the craziest moments. Hmm. Seeing Dude, they were selling for like 75 bucks at one point. Really? The refractors, when I first saw, they were like $200. I don't know what they're at now. But I assume they dropped a lot. How crazy is that? Has one, but his first game. His first game was really bad. Yeah. But his second game was good. And then everyone's like, he's a bust. Yeah, <laughs> everyone over Give the kid a chance. I know, dude. I'm sure the Cubs are probably playing better than you thought they would this season, though. I don't know how they're doing right now, but it started off pretty well. Well, I think he's more surprised that the... Well, a lot of people are more surprised that St. Louis hasn't played as well. I know. I think they'll turn it around now. Yeah, there's still a little time left. But they said that their owner, I think, said that they're going to be sellers. So yeah, I, don't know. I think a lot of people are thinking that they're going to get rid of Pogba. Yeah. I think the craziest this season is the... The uh, Padres have a losing record. Yeah. Just hasn't worked out. And Soto still hasn't signed any sense now. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they traded them. I don't think he's gonna want. I don't think he wants to stay there. All right, we got Trey Alexander. Letter T is Tristan. Anthony Black, there's a white Manyama silver. Yeah, you usually get like one silver, maybe two per case. Then a couple base cards. Livingston. Does he have like other inserts? No. He's just in the autograph. Sassier, which I believe was a first round pick out of Houston this year. Out of 99. He just has base, silvers, colors, and then the autos. Although the Super Fractor, I think, was Polarity. Yeah, so. Battle says everyone hates the Cubs. <laughs> I hate them more because Rex likes them. <laughs> Brandon Miller, Silver. Zach Eddy. Yeah, I mean, they got it into a deep hole, so they, they, they got to start turning it around soon. If not, it's over for them.
continue on. Kiki Rice. Better K, Tristan. Armando Vaca. All right, two more boxes, then we'll go to the next four. Adam Flagler. Autograph there, letter A going to Tristan. Brandon Miller. Brandon Slater, letter B, Tristan, to 150. And Leaky Black. Well, we heard today that the Angels announced that they'll they'll listen to some trade offers for Otani, but ultimately it's still unlikely they trade him. But I guess it doesn't hurt to listen, right? Donovan Klingon and Sky Clark. Kaelin Clark, so. I know, Rex, and we've, we've been over this before here in the store. We were talking about it earlier. My thing is that, like, what team is really going to want to give up so much for Otani knowing that they're only going to have him for potentially two months? You know? No one's going to no one's gonna get rid of the freaking house to trade for this guy, not knowing that he might not even want to say, stay and resign with you. So honestly, I think the Angels are kind of in the are kind of in the no man's land in a sense because they might not get anything crazy for him because, like I said, there's a chance that some teams are like, you know what, dude? Like, I don't know if I want to give up the farm for this guy. This guy's not even gonna resign with us, you know? Or the Angels, like I said. This whole time, even though we're all speculating on Tommy's going to leave, he probably has already, you know, spoke with the Angels talking about the future, you know? My thing is that, like, let's just say for the Dodgers, for instance, right? If the Dodgers really wanted him and he wants to go to the Dodgers, the Dodgers are not going to give up anything for that dude, knowing that he might just sign with us in the offseason. The Dodgers are just going to wait. They're just going to be like, why the hell am I going to trade for him now when we could just get him for free in the offseason?
Well, that's the thing. Some of these teams are going to want Otani to do a signing trade. But at the end of the day, if Otani doesn't want to do that, then are they really going to trade the farm for this guy? That's what I'm trying to say. Like, If there's like a chance like Seattle and the Dodgers, you know, Yankees, Mets, I don't see any of those teams giving up anybody crazy because they might be able to get them. Might be able to get him for nothing, free, without having to lose anybody. And then they can trade some players in the offseason to help make more roster room for him and other players or, you know, upgrades and shit like that. Not, what are you going to give me for Otani, though, for only two months? That's my thing. Because you have to trade someone really good, right? They're not going to ask for some guy that's in the minors. I mean, they're going to want someone really, really good, either MLB ready or somebody already established. That's what I'm trying to say. Who's really going to give up somebody like that? Like for the Dodgers. If the Dodgers really wanted him, who are the Dodgers really going to give up for him? But that's what I'm trying to say. I don't. We don't know what Tawny's thinking. We think that he like you know either wants to only stay in LA, SoCal, or go to Seattle. But we don't know if he's willing to even do a sign and trade. But those are questions that he's gonna have to answer, right? I mean, unless the dude's just so undecided, and he's just like, you know what? I can't give you a fair answer, man. Like, so you trade me, you trade me, but I'm not guaranteeing anything to anybody. Which is fair. He can do that. I mean, I don't think Otani's thinking of the future right now. I'm pretty sure he's just like most athletes during the regular season. They're they're still trying to potentially win games to make the playoffs, and hopefully they do, you know? I don't think he's thinking about next year already, you know? I get that, but that's the thing. Sometimes, this is, for someone for like Otani, yes, you can give us some prospects because they have a deep farm system and stuff like that, but... I think if you're going to trade Otani, you want someone back for him that can play now. That's already established, you know, that, that you can plug him in and play right away. Now, if this, would, this would be different if Otani had, like, an extra year on his contract, right? Because it could be like the Trey Turner situation with the Dodgers, right? You trade him, you trade for him, and you get him for the rest of the season, and you have him all for the next year, and then you can try to convince him to stay with you. That would be different. If Otani had another year under his belt, then that's when teams would trade the, the whole team for him, you know? Vice versa, like... Because at least they know they're going to have him for a year and a half. Or two months in a year. And plus, we don't know what the Angels actually want. Like what if the Angels went to the to the to the Yankees and said, "Yeah, I want Volpe and I want like, you know, give me like Stanton or you know even something crazy like Judge." I don't know. Well, the, would would you do that? <laughs> I mean, you're getting you're getting Otani. I'm just really curious on what his actual trade value is. Because we can just mess around and say he's worth every single player on a roster. But what could a team really trade for him for? And you're right. Some teams are not going to want to trade some of their stars now because they need them. But we're talking Otani, right? He's a different animal. I just wish players weren't traded for like future prospects. 
I wish they were traded for players, like player after player, you know? Another baseball mixer. Oh, nice. Yeah, I can put some spots back in. I can do it after this. I just got to double check who bought in and stuff like that. So that way I can post another filler and then I can also post spots back in. But yes, I will. Monopoly. Like we're talking like I buy the meal and they're going to have it on the, on the cup again. I love those ones. Okay, Rex. It's good to gain some weight during the fall. You can get hibernate during the this, during the winter. I used to have a friend that had a sister that worked at McDonald's for a very long time. She won a lot of prizes, man. She cheated a lot. <laughs> she was able to like gather up all the right stickers and all the right shit. Never eaten a quarter pounder at McDonald's. My wife does eat that though whenever we do eat it, which is rare, but I've only ever really eaten the normal small burgers, the Big Mac, which is the same thing, right? I don't think I've ever eaten like Well I ate a big and tasty, what was was that a quarter pounder back in the day? Big and tasty? I feel like that probably was. I did not add them, but I can tell you it definitely was rigged. Because I don't think anybody ever won all the actual real prizes. My friend's sister did win some of the nicer stuff, but she didn't. I don't think they won like the full on millions of dollars, right? Wasn't that wasn't that what it was about? Last box here, guys. Brandon Murray Gold! Out of 75. Bruce Thornton. Yes. Well, that's true, right? So that, that's the next best thing, right? Just sell it. And then at least you get something for it, right? Damn, that's wild. Kator, Otto. So Hunter, letter H, Alan Murdoch. McDonald's like documentary I remember seeing was Super Size Me. That one was such an iconic one, right? Like the amount of weight he gained and how like <laughs> unhealthy he was like at the end of eating for like almost a month of McDonald's. 
I will say McDonald's breakfast is still pretty elite though. That's the one thing I still actually eat more often. I don't really eat too much McDonald's dinner anymore. Like hamburgers. I mean, I get McChickens every once in a while because I just love chicken. But Rasir Bolton, but their breakfast is still something I eat a lot more. Number to 299, Trey White. I think there's some good colors in here. I think I see a red right there. Jalen Washington. And then letter J. That is Tristan. And a Armando Bacot, red, 7 to 10, for UNC, letter A, Tristan. All right, next two boxes. Caitlin Clark. Nice. Let her see. Copperman. There you go, man. That might be the big name in here, though, but we'll see. Khalil Ware. Gold to 50. Letter K. Really? I've never really actually eaten their bakery. I think I might have tried their cinnamon roll once, but I don't, I've never really, I've only really eaten like their cookies and I love their apple pies. We got Haley Cavender, letter H, but Alan Murdoch. I think that, and I usually like to get their holiday pies during the holiday season. Otega, letter O. Race Thompson at a ninety nine. Sassier. All right, down to the last box, guys. Good luck, everybody. Wow. Double the Caitlin Clark. This time of green. 22 out of 99. And actually, Adam just said there was a box, there was a break where there was a Clayton, Clark, a Clayton Clark and a Wemby Auto. Well, this one had two Caitlin Clarks. I heard about that, Rex. They have a cookies and cream ba uh, baked uh, pies, right? I think I've seen that online. Alamir Dawes out of 25. And here's the second auto. Posh Alexander. Letter P. Going to rock. There's another Wemby base. Two ninety nine MJ Rice I did see a TikTok of that Rex. I think you're right, it is in Chicago. Which is kinda interesting. I remember Todd, I remember Todd Reardon, our customer, one of the first times we went to the national he took us to the airport. He took us to Portillo's and then uh, he took us to like like one of the first McDonald's in Chicago. It was closed already, but they still have it up. That's kind of cool. Alrighty, guys, and there you go. That was the break.
So again, unfortunately, no Wemby autos, but Kaylin Clark was the big one on this side. Two of her autographs. So I'll do a quick recap. Alrighty guys, well there you go. So again, these are all the autos there. Tiki Rice, Eddie, Flagler, Black, Murray, Clark, Brandon Murray and Gold, Katur, Bolton, Washington, Cavender, Alexander, Alexander, Wibben Yama, Sassier, Al Alamir Dolls, Alexander, Frankie Collins, Khalil Ware, Wibben Yama, Wibben Yama, Horn, Whitmore, Ashley, Watkins, Wibben Yama, Silver, Zachary, Brandon Murray, Red, Zachary, Katur, Kane, Phillips, Blue, Shut, Caitlin Clark's right there, Red, and more women Yamas there. So thank you guys. Now I'm going to switch scenes and uh, we're going to do the giveaway, which again is going to be a wax party spot. We'll click the dice roll. Five into two, seven times. Top name gets a spot in the wax party. Seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And Copperman, it is your day. Congratulations. Five and a two, seven times. Top two. There you go, man. So there you go. Congratulations, buddy. You're in the wax party. If you haven't already won one, but appreciate it. Actually, look at that. You won the wax party spot in the last Bowman U basketball. Jesus. So there you go, guys. Appreciate it. Next one will be in the store soon. Jazzpiececasebreaks.com.